Good afternoon, class. So today we're going to cover chapter 87, which is ice machines. Uh, we'll do a quick screen share. Mm, there we go, ice machines. Um, the objectives are estimate the size of an ice machine required for a particular application explain the differences between cubes, crushed ice, flake ice, shaved ice, and block ice, and what applications are best suited for these uh, ice types. Determine if an ice machine needs to be cleaned. Describe the sequence of the freeze and harvest cycles of cube ice machine, and um, describe the operation of a flake ice machine. Troubleshoot cube and flake ice machines. So ice has always been valuable or has been a valuable commodity. Before the advent and commercialization of uh, mechanical refrigeration systems, ice was harvested from frozen lakes and rivers and then cut into large blocks with hand saws. I know that was some hard work. Um, even though there are many different types of ice machines, they all have the same major refrigeration components, which include a compressor, condenser, metering device, and an evaporator. So that doesn't change. It doesn't change whether we're talking about freezers, refrigerators, air conditioners, uh, walk-in coolers, you name it. This is why it is important to have a good understanding of the basic refrigeration cycle before working on commercial ice makers. Um, a quick review of that refrigeration cycle is the compressor being the heart of the system, the refrigerant leaves the from the discharge line of the compressor into the condenser, from the condenser to the metering device, from the metering device to the evaporator, and then back to the condenser. We already know that cycle. We know it comes out as a vapor, goes into the condenser, and then comes out as a liquid, goes into the metering device, and then into the evap coil, comes out of there as a vapor, and back to the compressor. And that's what's happening here. Uh, we have our, our discharge uh, actually coming out of here into our condenser, and then it comes out as a liquid, goes into our metering device and then into our evap coil that comes out as a vapor and then back to our compressor. Um, commercial ice machines are often used for food service applications such as restaurants, institutional kitchens, cafeterias, and correctional food service. They can also be found in such places as hotels, hospitals, theme parks, resorts, casinos, and cruise ships. Some commercial ice machines can be compact for small volume ice production. Uh, these are these are used when there are a limited ice or when there are limited ice needs, uh, and they do not take up uh, very much space. <clears throat> they can be found in places such as small kitchens, hotel hallways, and off in uh, office lunchrooms. Crushed ice has a finer texture and may need to be hand scooped rather than dispensed by a machine. This is why many machines incorporate a built-in ice crusher to allow for a choice between cube and ice, um, cube ice and crushed ice. Uh, as the ice forms, it floats, um, it floats to the top, and this ice layer traps the bubbles within a cube. Commercial ice machines utilize systems in which water is circulated continuously through the freezing cell. Water conditions vary widely from location to location. Cleaner water produces cleaner ice. It is important to have a good, clean water supply that has filters or strainers that are regularly changed or clean. So this is a cube ice machine right here. This is the kind that we have in the lab. Um, the uh, evap coils appear on the top. 
the condenser coils behind that. Actually, no. This one's a little bit different, but the EVAP coil is actually over here off to the side where the actual ice or water cascades over it and forms into ice. I think they have a more close-up picture on another slide coming up. Um, so cube ice machines all have the four basic components of the refrigeration cycle, compressor, condenser, meter, and device, and EVAP coil. So we know that. So these are the cells. So evaporators are made of copper to allow for good heat transfer. They are tin plated or sandwiched between stainless steel plates for protection against corrosion. So this here is the evap coil. And be, uh, inside of these, behind these uh, aluminum, or what is that, stainless steel, uh, is the copper coil inside, which has your refrigerant inside. And it is extremely cold. And so as the water cascades down this uh, across these cells, it starts to freeze. And then once that once it all freezes and forms one nice big sheet of ice, then it goes into the harvest cycle, and it pushes that one big sheet of ice in cube forms off of the uh, off of the cells. And then when it falls into the bin, it just breaks up into a bunch of cubes. Harvest cycle. The term harvest is a throwback to the days when ice was harvested from lakes and rivers. When the ice is properly formed, it needs to be released from the freezing cells. The harvest cycle in, is initiated either with the reservoir float switch, um, indicates uh, when the reservoir float switch indicates a low water level, or when the ice sensor determines the proper ice thickness has been reached. A hot gas solenoid valve will direct the hot discharge gas from the compressor directly to the evap coil rather than to the condenser. So that would be right here. So normally the hot gas will go straight to the condenser coil, but for the defrost cycle, it's gonna go. So, so when the hot gas comes out, <clears throat> it's gonna go to the evap, I mean, to the condenser coil, and some of it's gonna wanna go this way, but that solenoid valve will be closed and it won't allow any of the high gas to go to the evap coil unless it is in the defrost, not defrost, uh, in the harvest cycle, and this valve will open and it allows uh, the discharge gas to go straight from the compressor through the valve and into the evap coil. And that high gas is going to melt that sheet of ice right off of the cells and boom, drop it into the bin. Reservoir and flow switch. Since there is a fixed amount of water in the reservoir, the cubes should be fully formed when the water level becomes low. A common float that uh, rides up and down with the water level is attached to a switch. This will determine if the level is at maximum, minimum, or somewhere in between. A water level probe does not rely on, the, uh, on a float, but instead on the conductivity of the water. With either type of indicator, the cycle process is uh, still similar. Ice bin controls. <clears throat> the ice bin is where the ice is controlled and stored for later use. The ice drops from the freezing cells through the ice chute into the ice bin. There are different types of controls to determine with uh, when the ice bin is full. A thermostatic capillary tube or ice level probe attached to a pressure switch can be mounted in the ice drop zone. With, uh, when the bin is full, ice touches the thermostatic bulb and the pressure inside the bulb drops. This opens the contacts in, uh, in the pressure switch to shut off the ice machine. Unlike cube ice uh, that go through freezing and harvest cycles, flake ice making is, con is a continuous process. Most flake ice machines utilize a vertical cylinder or cylindrical tube-shaped stainless steel evaporator. So the harvest cycle on the cube ice machine is when the ice is removed from the evap coil and into the bin. That is the harvest. We just harvested the ice. 
on flake ice machines, the harvest is pretty much constant because this auger right here sits in the middle of this little chamber here, which is your evap coil. So this whole little cylinder is the evap coil. So it gets extremely cold around there. And then the water going through there, it, uh, it forms into ice along the inside wall in here. And this auger is on the inside, just turning and shaving away at that ice. And the ice is falling down into the bin. So it's constantly being harvested. As the ice is produced, it's also being harvested. auger seal. The auger will be driven by an electric motor through a gearbox arrangement. A positive seal prevents uh, water from entering the gearbox and oil from entering the ice. It is important for the auger to be perfectly straight inside the cylinder so that it does not wobble. The auger flute should not contact the inner wall of the stainless steel evaporator. So it should be straight. We don't want it to scrape the ice. We don't want it to scrape the metal. And also, you want to make sure that that seal is 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 good because, it, like they said, you don't want oil getting into your um, ice or water getting into the seal and you know rusting out your uh, your equipment. Cleaning. Many ice machines have a cleaning cycle. To clean an ice machine, all the ice must be removed from the bin so that the cleaning solution will not contaminate the ice. The water should be turned off and the sump tank drained. The cleaning solution or descaling solution is mixed with warm water in the correct ratio and poured into the sump tank. When the unit is turned on to the, uh, to the cleaning cycle, the cleaning solution will flow through the system and, show, uh, and should be circulated until the unit is clean. In addition to a, uh, a standpipe, a periodic flush cycle controlled by a timer will cycle the unit down and open a flush valve to allow for the complete water system to drain. This is important for flake ice machines that utilize an auger rather than evaporator plates. To artificially increase the discharge pressure, during the low ambient conditions, headmaster controls are often used. The headmaster is a valve with three different ports. One connects to the condenser, one to the receiver, and one directly to the discharge line. If the discharge pressure begins to drop, some refrigerant will bypass the condenser and go directly to the receiver as controlled by the headmaster valve. So basically in low ambient conditions when not a lot of uh, liquid refrigerant is required, uh, the headmaster valve is gonna send that uh, excess refrigerant to the receiver where it could then be used in the uh, future when the load increases. Uh, remote condensers. When installing an ice machine located in a high ambient <laughs> when installing an ice machine located in a high ambient area, you should advise the customer as to the benefits of a remote uh, condenser, because the condenser needs to be uh, it, it it needs to be outside. I mean, because rem remote um, condensers are more efficient because they're outside in the uh, ambient air because the condenser is where you want to remove heat but if the ambient temperature is just as hot as the refrigerant in the condenser then you can't really remove heat because heat travels from hot to cold so you want to put the condenser somewhere where it's going to be uh where it can re remove the heat so um a remote condenser it will be more ideal in a uh, high ambient uh, situation. Excuse me. <clears throat> freeze ups. Freeze ups are the most frequent service problem associated with ice machines. Always check the simple things first. A dirty evap coil causes the ice to stick to the freezing cells so that it will not release during harvest. 
uh, and during the next freeze cycle, the ice continues to build up in bridges. Uh, too much water flow will cause the ice to, to build up and bridge downward over the cells. A particular, uh, sorry, a partially blocked water distributor tube will lead to bridging of some cells and lack of ice in other cells. So dirty evap coils or the uh, partially blocked water distributors are both common issues to check for in, uh, in ice machines. Uh, control systems. Electronic control systems consist of a central controller that receives inputs from assorted sensors that monitor the status of such levels as ice thickness, water level, water temperature, and discharge temperature. Control systems continued. Uh, control boards utilize multi-layered uh, multi circuitry to improve safety protection and help with service diagnosis. LED lights help to distribute a problem, I mean, sorry, help to troubleshoot a problem. Uh, these lights come on during sequences of each cycle, uh, such as fill, harvest, freeze, and pump out. When troubleshooting, the LED should, uh, should light up the proper sequence of operation. So in summary, there are many different models and types of ice machines. The most common types are cube ice and flake ice machines. Both types utilize the standard refrigeration cycle. There's always a logical reason for an operating problem. Cube ice machines have a harvest cycle that requires, a, uh, requires hot gas, while flake ice machines continuously produce ice and utilize a rotating auger. <clears throat> Whenever troubleshooting these machines, try to determine if the malfunction is refrigerant related. Most manufacturers provide detailed service uh, manuals and troubleshooting guides that are unit specific. Controller LED fault code indicators will help to diagnose problems. Take the troubleshooting sequence step by step. And last but not least, look at the symptoms first before jumping to conclusions because there are no such things as phantom freeze ups. There's always a reason. You just got to take your time and look for it. Patience is one of the most valuable tools a technician can have. You just got to sit back, think, keep it simple, start at the simple stuff, and then work your way down. So uh, anyways, hopefully that was helpful. Um, remember to read your chapter, which is 87, and um, the review questions are on FlexiQuiz already. So stay safe, stay healthy, stay in the house. I'll keep you updated as far as when we can return to campus. Until then, keep studying, stay in the books, and um, I will see y'all on the next one.